Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be talking a bit about an opinion, but also about the release or almost immediate release of the Mint 35mm camera. If you haven't been following up, Mint, a uh, camera manufacturer based in Hong Kong, uh, has been working on making a 35mm uh, camera and compact camera. And I won't say compact 100%, but it looks compact. And the reason I have this uh, Roly 35 uh, in my hands is because they've inspired themselves in this camera design to make the new camera. And you can read the latest uh, update, it's update number 10, I'll leave a link below. And you can read all about what Roly, I mean Mint, has been trying to do. And what they are trying to do is a 35mm film camera, as far as I know, full frame, um, that has LiDAR AF, so it focuses by LiDAR, like iPhones and other cameras are starting to do. Um, I actually don't know if iPhones focus by LiDAR now that I think. They have a LiDAR, but you know what I mean. It's this kind of cool technology for focusing even if there's no light. I think it can see with no light and so on. But it's very cool. Also DJI, the ones that are making these mics, do LiDAR stuff for film cameras, drones, and so on. <clears throat> but it has LiDAR AF, so it's an AF camera. It will be 35mm film, full frame as far as I know. And they have finally given first a price estimate of how much it's going to be. So this camera is aiming to be between $650 to $800, which is pretty much the same in euros. And uh, it won't be releasing this year, but probably next year as soon as possible. And one thing they said in the comments of the update that I thought was very interesting is they've poured all the resources they have into making a new film camera in 2024. And that means that if this project doesn't go through, it will be a bust for Mint and maybe the whole brand can't survive. And that's one of the things that I like to think that the film community is positive enough that a new film camera coming to market from somebody that's put all their eggs into this one basket is something we will support. For 650 to 800 euros or dollars for a new film camera that shoots 35 millimeter film and has AF with LiDAR, and auto exposure and all these functions that we all come and love, I think is something we can all kind of afford to purchase if we're in the market for it. Because point and shoot cameras are the cameras that probably have the, the worst lifespan of all the film cameras. Because large format cameras don't really have much to them and there's a lot of manufacturers making them now. Then we have medium format cameras, which were in most cases professional cameras, which means they are meant to be serviced and lubed and cleaned and so on. So Roly Flexes, Hasselblads, Mamiya RBs, RZs, Pentax 6 by 7s and so on will probably be in the market for quite a few years due to that, you know, spare parts and know-how and mechanics. Lenses are superb. Usually, unless you treat them really badly, they will last for a long time. And yes, there's medium format Holgas and Lubitels and things like this, but let's leave that for a different day. Uh, then we have 35mm cameras with the same thing. Mechanical cameras like Leica's and Nikon's F's and F2's will last for years with service. And then we have plastic DSLRs, I mean SLRs, sorry, which are prone to break. But the point and shoots, the point and shoots are the cameras that hit a couple things that are really interesting. One, they were really never made to last this long. Second, they were made in the time where things would break and that was the goal, is that they would break after a few years and you would buy a new one. It wasn't meant to be repaired. So point and shoots are really not made to be repaired. Uh, sometimes just opening them will show you that they are really weren't made into that. So the screws are going into plastic and things like that, which is, you know, first case for bad. The gears are made out of plastic and they break. And I know a lot of people have been doing efforts, like PPP has been doing a lot of efforts to bring back point and shoots back to life. But there's many issues there. But also, point and shoots hit the second thing, which is they're the easiest camera to start shooting film. Because if you get into shooting film, yes, the best is that you would learn all the basics and you learn aperture and shutter speed and depth of field and Sunny 16 and how to develop your own film and all this. But most people want a camera that they can pick up, put a roll of film, and it will work. And this is where point and shoots have been increasingly popular nowadays. So the Olympus Mu 2, the Mu 1, the Yashica T4, T5s, T3s, all of these cameras, Contax T2s, T3s, have been extremely popular, uh, surpassing the price basically of what they were back in the day with inflation. So I think Mint 
hopefully will hit the nail on this camera, uh, that hopefully people will purchase it and will invest in having a new film camera made by something. And Mint, the manufacturer, has never made a 35 millimeter or a 120. So a normal film photography camera, they've always done instant cameras. They've done cameras that shoot either Instax wide or mini or square or refurbished the SX-70. So this is kind of out of their expertise, but I think it's really important to understand that the cameras they've been making throughout the years have been pretty good in general. Obviously, as a small manufacturer with no real Kickstarter or funding, things are slow to ramp up, but they've been continuously improving. The RF-70, which is a rangefinder Instax wide camera, is like a Plowbell Machina. Obviously, there's a big difference between quality between one and the other. But I remember in 2018, Photokina telling Gary from Mint, hey, if you just change the Polaroid pack in the back, or sorry, the Instax pack in the back, and put a roll of 120, you have yourself a Plowbell Machina. It shoots six by seven negatives or six by nine negatives, no problem. Obviously, the lens on that wasn't supposed to render like a medium format camera because the Instax is one shot and it's sharp is good but you know you're not enlarging that shot you're not scanning and making posters or billboards like you can with a M Mamiya 7 or a Plowbell 6x7 so I think Mint is in a very interesting position of taking the leap into roll film photography making a new camera and like I said based on the Rolly 35 millimeter so it is very similar in looks but it has obviously some dis uh, differences I think that's really cool. And I think now that we have a price point of between $650 to $800, it is within reason for a new point and shoot camera made in limited quantities from a new manufacturer. And then next year. So I will say here on YouTube that I will be purchasing one for sure because I want to support Mint and what they're doing. I think they've done a great job. Like I said, no crowdfunding, no Kickstarters, Nothing like that. This, all the products they're coming out with, they just launch them. Sometimes they go a small launch so people can pre-order, I guess, gather some funds, and then they finally order, like they launch it with stock. But this has been really interesting to see. I'm very excited for Mint and the film photography community. Like I said, it's a camera we kind of need because we still have our Rolleiflexes, we still have our Hasselblads, we still have our Nikon Fs kicking butt, Point and shoot cameras slowly but surely are diminishing in numbers and people really want them. The new users, the people that are actually buying film and getting into film nowadays are really looking into the point and shoot. So I think it's the market to fill. But yeah, that's a bit of the news of the Mint. I'll put pictures and a link to the, to the update. Also, there's a link that they put for people just supporting. So if you want to donate to them, I guess they're also open to that. But yeah, I'm very happy to see Mint investing on a new uh, point and shoot camera 35 millimeter uh, in 2024 when it releases and we can't wait to hear more about it but yeah let me know what you think about the mint camera is it something that appeals to you obviously the size is really interesting and I think the price point is not so far reached to be completely crazy in this time and age but yeah thanks for watching see you in the next one bye